Hello and welcome back to Shell Center. This is Bryce. Thanks so much for stopping by. Thanks for liking and subscribing. If this is something you end up enjoying, you never know. It could happen. Hey, we're in a new spot. I got moved into a new office. Took a while. Sorry for the lack of videos this past week, but it's been pretty intense. Barely made it, but we're here and that's what matters. So let's jump into the news for the week. But that explains why we're at a yet another bookshelf. There's still a lot of work to do, still a lot of books to move in here and get here because uh, I took a lot home. So as you know, Top Shelf News is where I talk about the latest in fantasy, science fiction, sometimes horror, mostly as it relates to book news, but also media news. Uh, there's a healthy amount of each this week, I guess, so we'll get into it. I'm a little late on some of these, but I did want to talk about them regardless. So anyway, the books. First things first, Anthony Ryan, the author of Blood song is got he's got a new series coming out from orbit a tide of black steel that sounds very enticing to a fantasy fan um, and it's the age of wrath number one i did not look if it was a trilogy but maybe editing bryce could possibly know it might be more uh, it seems like Brian is more of a trilogy author at least has been so far doesn't mean he has to be uh, going forward but we'll see. Then Brandon Sanderson, I've actually kind of prided myself. I have not had much Brandon Sanderson news uh, in the last couple of news segments, but here we are with another one. Um, you know, he's always got something, he's always writing. So this is actually his first, I think his first picture book for children. It's the most boring book ever. And I love these kind of takes. Uh, on on books for kids that make them really fun. We have a ton of these fun kind of books um, that our kids just love, like uh, B.J. Novak's uh, The Book Without Pictures or something like that. Just a lot of fun. Uh, there's a book about like where you just like press this dot and it just turns into more dots and it's just like we still read it to this day. So it's fun to have like a fun little unique uh, a concept for kids to maybe jump onto and find silly. Uh, so anyway, uh, I think that's a great idea. It looks like illustrated by Kazu Kibuishi, and that is supposed to come out September 24th of this year. So that'll be cool. Uh, I, I'm probably gonna get it, let's be honest. I still have a young one. <laughs> the rest may not care. They're into their chapter books now and they're pretty cool. Uh, but you know, a good picture book, it's it, it just, it's it's the right thing sometimes. All right, there and then in indie book news, we've got H.L. Tinsley's got the sequel to We Men of Ash and Shadows. It's The Hollows coming out this month in March. That would be the 22nd. It looks like we've already got a cover uh, and hopefully I found the uh, artist. I couldn't find the uh, artist when I was first uh, looking up so we'll see but anyway it uh, looks like I might be getting a copy of that too uh, provided by the author so thank you very much but definitely wanted to make that known I know good friends of mine have recommended and, and then therefore I bought We Men of Ash and Shadow so I've only heard great things about it so very excited that there's more going on then um, finally in our book to kind of round out the bookish news Cradle, I wanted to talk Cradle, and I know this is already news uh, that's been out there. This is one of those older news uh, items that happened about a month ago. But uh, there, and, I, and I've kind of talked about it a little bit too, but the Kickstarter for the animation, uh, one of the stretch goals, uh, and we'll talk about those in a sec here, but one of the stretch goals was for uh, Will White to write a new Cradle book. And so it looks like that's happening regardless. It was kind of made a, a, a like a kind of a final push stretch goal, but knowing that, that they weren't gonna meet some of their stretch, stretch goals, uh, I kind of just pushed this one up. As my son astutely observed when the uh, Kickstarter for the animation project first started, uh, that one of the stretch goals was to write a new book in the Cradle universe. And my son goes, I mean, isn't he going to do that anyway, let's be honest. And uh, yeah, he called it. So <laughs> very astute 13 year old. Uh, don't let him know that I said this, okay? He already has enough of an ego, okay? Uh, and that actually will be, it's a collection of Cradle short stories, like, and so it'll be then a novel length cradle book. I think that's pretty cool. Then it lets us kind of jump around, see where things are. 
uh, for different people. I understand it'll be at different time points, you know, either during the series, before, and maybe even after. So that's kind of exciting. Um, speaking of the Cradle Animation uh, Kickstarter, it did reach its goal, but just its base goal. I think, I don't know, I don't know how soon after they realized maybe we went a little crazy maybe that was the intent or whatever like this the whole process of of animating anything apparently is very expensive um but the stretch goals went into like the i mean tens of millions range like it went high and i remember like you know when you know it did fine at first but we're talking <laughs> It didn't meet even the million dollar mark, which is just the base level of getting funded for the Kickstarter until pretty close to the end there. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't know at what point they were like, oh, maybe we maybe we had our, our expectations a bit high here. Because, um, I, again, I, as one who admitted, hey, I think this would be awesome and so much fun have an animation for the Cradle series and hopefully that'll get picked up somewhere. I think it'll be great. I think it'd be a next potentially Avatar. I don't know. Maybe uh, it could be that. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's gotten very popular. It's an indie book series that's actually reached the New York Times bestseller list. So I mean that's it's got so much going for it. But uh, again as, as a reader I was going you know, I hope this gets funded, but I, I just, I'm going to pass on this Kickstarter. So I felt bad for that, but it, at the same time, I understood, and I think that's what a lot of people did. Uh, but also, we're talking like like millions and millions of dollars worth. These stretch goals were crazy. Uh, and I just think they might have realized, oh, we, we bit off a little more than we could chew. We, we threw that a little higher, had our expectations maybe a little too high there. All right, jumping into the media news. Uh, first things first, let's talk The Rings of Power. It's got a season three already approved or whatever process they go through. Uh, we, haven't, we don't even have a season two yet. Uh, season one was rough. I struggled very much with many parts of it. Um, one thing I have to say, and this is what I was talking about on Twitter, uh, a lot of people complaining, and, 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 and I think rightfully so, like really, we're, we already got a season three going for the Rings of Power with how bad season one was. I think one, they maybe don't understand the concept of a sunk cost. Uh, they're like, well, we invested this much money into it, let's keep going. Um, maybe it'll recoup. But I will say, one thing I gotta hand it to Amazon for is that they don't just abandon series willy-nilly like Netflix, which gets very frustrating. It gets very hard to be a fan of a series on Netflix right away, right? I don't jump, not that I have like the time or I'm known for like jumping right on series anyway, but it's harder to, I feel like, just the incentive structure is not there to jump into a series on Netflix that's new until maybe it has a couple seasons under its belt so you know it'll actually be good. I'm just saying that's the way that they are now pushing us. It's, it's what they've done. There's plenty of things that do well, plenty of things that, that, that people jump in, on and watch, but I'm just saying they're, they're tending toward that incentive and you gotta be careful with that. So I will, I will hand it to Amazon <laughs> as much as I struggled so much with the Rings of Power. Um, I was supposed to do a review of the series and I just could not get myself to care to even like talk about it anymore. <laughs> and so I just didn't. Maybe I will for season two, but or beginning or before season two starts because I still have a lot of notes on that. But man, that's, I, that was a struggle. Then we've got, speaking of people that struggle with series, we've got the Three Body Problem, March 21st on Netflix. So speaking of Netflix, and it's a new series on Netflix. Uh, Three Body Problem um, is really good. Excellent. I need to finish the trilogy, uh, but the first book, very good. If you like computer programming, it's very interesting how it's kind of utilized in this kind of science fiction way, um, which, of course, that makes sense. But, okay, just, just but the things are, <laughs> we've got Benioff and Weiss, you know, the showrunners for Game of Thrones behind this, and then also Alex Wu uh, for this as a TV series for Netflix for the three-body problem. Now, Benioff and Weiss... <laughs> I, I think this is perfect for them, frankly. The, the books have already been written. We're already done. We know how where, where to go with it. We know what to do with it. And I think they did show very much that they are very good at, at adapting things that are already there. All right? The problem gets to where they, they're 
continuing an adaptation for <laughs> the something that is not quite finished, and that's what the problem was for Game of Thrones, at least for me. When there were books, they were doing a great job, very good stuff. There were even some moments of, of doing fine uh, without the actual source material. So I, <laughs> I will say... I'm going to give them another chance. I think it's fair. I think it'll be good because, again, they've shown they can do well with source material. That's that's all I'm giving them, okay? Then we've got How to Become a Dark Lord and Die Trying by Django Wexler. This has already been adapted, and it's apparently for TV uh, by Legendary. Adam Wingard is, is kind of helming this, known for uh, Godzilla, right? It looks cool. I like the premise. Essentially, it's kind of like a portal fantasy, it sounds like. Someone from our time period, whatever, ends up in a medieval time frame, and there's a Dark Lord, and she's got to fight him, and, and all this, or whatever. And... I don't want to go more into it. I feel like I might have been spoiled on a couple things, but I do really want to read that. But I think that's cool. Uh, Django Wexler's always been someone great to follow on uh, Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, and just insightful things I like, you know, has done just like, here's what they should have done. Because I like, I like, like, you don't just criticize, but actually say, okay, here's here's where you can fix. And I really like that. And I think he's done a lot that uh, with, with some of the, the weaker things uh, that have come out uh, of late. And then again, we've been talking a lot, Game of Thrones, all of that. Uh, Night of the Seven Kingdoms, apparently the prequel to Game of Thrones, will be coming out next year. Um, late next year is what I understand, but next year regardless. So the first would be Night of the Seven Kingdoms, The Hedge Knight. Now, if you've read these, they're great, they're punchy, they're like all contained in one book, yeah, well, one novella actually each, and I think they do a really good job of just kind of, you know, you see like what's going on, you see the world, but they're, they're short, they're sweet, they get right to it, they're really a lot of fun. Um, there don't obviously. There's just not an, an enough page count to get into the political schemings and the millions and millions of characters that are in a Game of Thrones or a Song of Ice and Fire. But they're perfect, I think, for ad adapting into film. I mean, like perfect. Uh, and so I'm excited for that. I think that'll be great because uh, these are just fun. And and it feels like that's something that Martin can actually <laughs> complete and do. They're novellas, right? So. You can keep pushing those and cranking those out. And I understand he's got a number like planned. He he had planned to kind of release some here and there in between the main books coming out. Now, uh, <laughs> we, we, we see where that's gotten us, but uh, I am very excited for that. So anyway, that's been the top shelf news at my new place, uh, my new office. I'm changing, I'm, I'm working things out, uh, trying to get things back on the shelves. Uh, you know, I know they're, they're weak and then you got law books all over the place trying to figure that out. Maybe starting my law YouTube channel, let me know. Uh, if you've enjoyed, I've been on a couple live streams lately just talking law stories and whatnot and what I do and I, I it's been kind of fun. So I was, you know, debating maybe maybe a, a, a law tube channel uh, might be fun. Uh, anyway, what do you think? Uh, would you watch it? <laughs> it does, I know it doesn't have a lot of cross value from uh, a fantasy book channel. So, but anyway, I, th I thought it might be fun. Anyway, thanks so much for stopping by and we'll catch you next time. Bye.